Hey y'all, it's Robert, and in today's video, I'll be showing you how to make a chunky cake from the movie Child's Play. And this cake is going to be a little complicated because of all the facial features I have to get just right in order for this cake to look as close as I can get it to the character. For this cake, I'm going to need really good support to make sure that it doesn't fall over and everything will stay secure. So I'm using a threaded rod with a wooden cake board, and I'm going to cover that rod with aluminum tape just to make sure that it's all food safe. For the cake layers, I'm using confetti sheet cakes and I'm also using six inch cake layers for the head. And I'm going to tort these and then add some syrup to each one because I will be carving this cake so I don't want it to dry out as I'm working on it. I'm stacking the cake with vanilla buttercream and because of how I'm structuring this cake, I'm also going to add some cake dowels. So I'm cutting those all the same size and then I'm adding a cake board on top of that before I continue to stack the cake. Now that the cake is all stacked up, I can now start carving it. So I'm using a serrated knife to do this. And I'm looking at a picture of Chucky and I'm just eyeing this, trying to get it as close as I can to the shape of this character. Now I'm going to be adding a crumb coat to this cake and I just wanna make sure that I don't get any crumbs into the final coat. And of course, I'm going to be covering this cake with chocolate ganache. For the ganache, I'm using a 3 to 1 ratio of chocolate to cream, and I find that this ratio works best whenever I'm covering a cake with fondant or modeling chocolate. So I'm combining the cream and the chocolate, mixing that together until it's smooth, then I'm going to cover it and let it set before I add it to the cake. I'm adding the ganache to the cake with a piping bag. It's just a lot easier to apply it to the cake this way. Then I'm going to completely cover it by using an offset spatula and then using an acetate sheet to really smooth this out because I need a really smooth surface before I add the modeling chocolate. I like to use white modeling chocolate whenever I'm making a sculpted cake. I just find it to be a lot easier to work on all the details without having to worry about mixing colors up. And then I can just add the color at a later point. So I'm going to roll out the modeling chocolate and then completely cover this cake. But before I do that, I have to steam the ganache first because I wanna make sure that this modeling chocolate sticks to it. Then I can cover the cake and I'm just going to completely cover it with a smooth base before I begin to build up on it. Now I can start adding some details. So I'm adding some of the facial features first by adding his nose and his eyebrows and eyes and then also his mouth. And I'm doing this by adding modeling chocolate and using sculpting tools to get this as close as I can to the character. I'm also adding more modeling chocolate to fill out his face by adding cheeks in the folds around his mouth. For the overalls, I'm creating these by using sculpting tools. So I'm actually not adding more modeling chocolate. I'm just creating those indentations and then defining it out. I'm also creating details to the shirt by creating markings where the seams would be and then also around the neck of the shirt. And to really detail the overalls, I'm creating the markings by using a stitching wheel tool. Now it's time to make Chucky look really scary. So I'm going to start adding the scarring onto his face. To make the scars, I'm using a modeling tool to create the indentations, and I'm looking at a picture of Chucky trying to get these markings as close as I can to this character.
Now it's time to make his hair, and I saved this part for last because I already knew that this was going to be really tough to make. I've never had to make hair before, so I just added modeling chocolate on top of it and then began to build onto it. And then I used modeling tools to create indentations where it looks like hair strokes. And I think I got it pretty good. This is the first time that I had to create hair, so I just know that I'll get better at it. Now this cake is all sculpted, so I can now start adding color to it. And I'll be doing this by using edible paint. I'm adding a diluter to it to get it to a good consistency where I can start painting with it. So I'm starting with his skin tone first, then working on his hair, and then all the other facial features. I'm painting the neck of the shirt red, and I know the rest of his shirt has stripes on it, but it would really be impossible for me to try to recreate that, so I'm just going to keep it white and then paint the rest of the overalls blue. And to add a little more detail to the face, I'm using petal dust to create some dimension. This is really going to add those shadows and this really makes this character pop. And here it is. This is the Checky Cake from the movie Child's Play Complete. This was a really tough cake to make, but I had a lot of fun working on the details. It's my favorite part whenever I'm working on the sculpted cake. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. Make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel and comment below any other cakes that you want to see me make. And until then, I'll see y'all in the next video. Focus. Focus on me, not the pumpkin. <laughs> so this was a real... <laughs> it want to focus on that pumpkin so bad. Oh my gosh.